Hello! In this video we will be issuing our own token on the XLP Ledger. In this case I will be doing it on the testnet because otherwise I would need three accounts and yeah, that's, that would be like <coughs> 6 XLP and I would have to delete the accounts F afterwards and so on. So that's why I'm going to do it in the testnet. So let's start with the premise that we will have um, an issuer account, so we have we'll, we will have an account that is the issuer that is creating an, their own token. Then we will have an account receiver, so a person that gets all the so another account that gets all the uh, created tokens at the beginning. <coughs> <clears throat> and we will be have one other account, so I will call it one third party, so somebody else, because we will we'll want to test if the receiver account who has all the uh, the all the tokens, uh, all the well, all the created tokens at the beginning, will want to exchange and send this token between those two. So we will try that. So, but both of those can send this token to each other, and so we can test it. Okay, so let's start. First, we will have to create three accounts. So let's start. We go to XOPL faucets and we just generate test credentials. I will just copy the secret here. So this one is the issuer account. I will just copy it in there. That's the secret. And that's the address. So I'm just going to copy both for now. So we can see that is the issuer. Okay. Then, then let's generate the next one. Then this one shall be the uh, receiver. So we'll just maybe we'll just take get another box here. So these are the receiver credentials. And then we will have one last one, the third party credentials. And then one last time. And we've got the secret again. <coughs> And we'll also paste the address as well. Okay, now we are all set and done. Now we will start, uh, well, now we will start with the XUM app. The first thing we have to do here is that this will be all on the testnet. You have to go to settings and then go to advanced and then select under node one of these tested nodes. So it, at first, it, it, uh, that was the setting at first, so xplclass.com. So we will change that to uh, testnet.xpl-labs.com. Uh, so in this case, we're not anymore communicating with the mainnet, rather than that we're now communicating with the testnet. So now we can import all these accounts. So you will go to um, settings, accounts, and we will add all the accounts. So let's start, import, full access, and family seed. So we'll copy the first one, that's the secret up there, that's the issuer. So the family seed, just copy and paste it there. And we'll call that one the issuer. So there's the sign request I have to get rid of, okay. So, all right, so we've got the first account. So uh, whenever you generate a account in the testnet, you get 1000 XP. So for all, everybody wondering, these are worthless, more or less. So. These are not real XRP, they are XRP on the testnet, okay? Um, right, so let's continue. So we'll go to accounts again, say add account, import, so we will have to do the same procedure again. And now import the receiver account. So we'll copy and paste it here, and that is the receiver. And now we have to let do it one last time, that is the third party account. So somebody else uh, we will just call third party. <coughs> so for access again, family seat. Oh, copy paste the family seat here. What is the third party? All right. So when we're done, we will go to website examcommunity.com. On that on that website, we will click on XPL tokens. And then there's there's a tab create a new token on the XP ledger. So there's some info, so we will have to pay 5 XMP for the creation also. So we'll go to next, now we have to check all the boxes here. There's just some information you will have to know here. Then, now we can decide if we want to launch our token in the mainnet or in the testnet. In my case, I want to do it in the testnet. Uh, but you can also issue your own token in the XMP mainnet. But you will have to pay 5 XMP and will need two accounts at least. Let's continue. So I'm going to create a dev token in my case. So the, the XMP dev token, I'm going to call the currency code dev. 
And how many tokens shall there be at the beginning? Well, let's say, uh, whatever, 1 million. So, I will create 1 million XP tokens. Now I will have to sign in. So, you can see here, pay with some, I will click that here. And now I will, so, you could do that on your phone if you have it in a testnet, but I have it on the emulator here. So, we'll have to click on opening some, copy the address, and then just paste it into the browser. So I'm just going to go to browser now, uh, nope, one more time, I'm going to go to browser, copy and paste the one here, click uh, click on opening sum, so enter my good password, and now we'll start, the first thing will happen with the issuer, so yeah, now we will select issuer, and then sign this transaction here, with my great password again, and so we're signing. And we're done. So now, yes, the transaction was rece received, and we can continue. So we can see that this account here is the issuer account, okay? So we can see that this account, the switch to the issuer here, that is the issuing account. So we click on next. Then we have to set default Ripple uh, back to your issuer account, so allows you to send others, uh, allows you and others to send your token through the Expo Ledger. Yes, we will have to set it, otherwise people can send or send and transfer our token. So we will go to the app again. Now the sign up request is here and the issuer will sign it again. So now the next thing we need is a so-called trust line because other people can receive our token if they don't set a trust line. Oh no, I misclicked. Uh, okay, yeah, I will have to do it again because I misclicked when focusing. So we'll have to do one more time, and um, I shouldn't, uh, yeah, it's a little bit buggy sometimes, so I'm not going to click here now, I'm going to click up here, then it should work, so because it's going to redirect me to the next one, yes. So now we are, we set the default ripple, and we can go on. So now we have to set, oh, I have to do it again, okay, so we'll have to set the trust that apparently, trust that apparently one more time, so it's a little bit buggy apparently, when I do it on my phone, so I'm going to copy that one again. Uh, oh, yeah, now, oh, I might sign it with the wrong account, my bad, yeah. So I will have to go in there again, but I have to sign it with the um, receiver account. That's very important, otherwise it won't work. So not the issuer, but in this case, the receiver account has to sign it here. Otherwise, it, it won't work. So I'm going to try it one more time. So I misclicked before, I think. So now I set it, and now the issuer... Should be happy. Yes. So now we set the trust, and now we can issue a token. One million DEF tokens will be sent to the recipient account. So I will click on issue token. I will have to sign again. So maybe the request is being sent. Yes, it's already there. So just click here. I think the issue will sign it. So one million DEF tokens will be issued, and I will have to sign again. And we're all set. So we can see here that <coughs> the issue issued uh, minus 1 million DEF tokens. So we can see here the total amount of IUs this account owes somebody. And now we can see here on the receiver, the receiver now is 1 million DEF tokens. So it's down there. So now we can continue. So we don't need the black hole. And we're done. Yes, we're done. So we issued our token. So now the trigger part will continue. So now we have, so if we look at the diagram, the receiver now has 1 million DEF tokens. Uh, the issuer uh, does, can hold them himself. The issuer only has an IU. The issuer owes everybody else 1 million. One million. So he's on minus 1 million. So the, the issuer, to issuer account can issue more of the token. Uh, or you could also destroy the issue account, then there could no, then never there could be never more of these tokens. But now with one million the rece receiver side, now uh, the receiver is fine because he has a trust line. We set the one up, but the third party doesn't. So if we try to send now, if we go back to the XUM app and now try to send, uh, in this case, the DEF token. For example, we'll send one hundred DEF tokens to the third party. Then it won't work. No, it doesn't work. Unable to send the token to the recipient. The recipient does not have a trust line. Because in order to send this token to the, to the third party, they have to set a trust line first. So we'll change to a third party. 
and go to the XAM community app again, go to XOPL talk, uh, go to um, trust sets, trust lines. So we will also have to change here to the test net, so it's very important, change to the test net. And now we will enter the address of the issuer. So the issuer address in this case is that one here. The issue is that one here. So we'll just copy the address. Then the currency token is def. Oh, okay, it's a little bit buggy, isn't it? Maybe not, okay. Def. No, it doesn't work like that apparently. Okay, oh yeah, uh, um, it's a little bit buggy, so yeah, selected from list is better. So just click down there, so we can see def, and then it was one, one million, and we have to sign the transaction. So we will go to sign again, maybe the request will come through, no, we probably won't. Okay, then they'll have to copy that, so uh, if you do it on your phone, it's easier, so or you can also scan the car because it's easier, but in my case, I can't scan because it's an emulator, and it doesn't have, it doesn't have a camera, so I have to do it the, well, I have to use the workaround of copying that, pasting that in the browser, and then opening it in the app, so I have to enter the password again. So now the third party, so now we'll sign with the third party, because the third party has to trust the issuer. So that, that's what it called, well, why it's called a trust line. So now we will do that. And as soon as we set the trust line, the third party is also able to receive uh, the dev token. So we can see here and other, under other tokens, now uh, we have it here, we have zero of those. And now, for example, the receiver can send um, dev tokens, let's say 1000, we will send 1000 dev tokens to the third party. I will sign that. And as you can see, okay, misclicked, one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see, uh, this transaction was signed successfully, so now no, I don't have one million uh, dev tokens anymore. So now I can change to third party. The third party received 1,000 dev tokens. So it's basically the same procedure uh, on the mainnet. So that's basically how all of this works. So this is a so-called issued currency. Um, there are lots of issued currencies already on the mainnet. So if we change again and go to the tokens, so list all of the mainnet tokens, we can see here that there are lots of to issued tokens. So GitHub is a big issuer. GitHub is issuing Bitcoin. Uh, the great thing is you can basically issue anything in there. It's basically just a, an IOU management sy system. And you can, for example, issue whatever. So Bitcoin or shoes or, I don't know, one gallon of oil. It doesn't matter. Also one euro. You can is issue also norm uh, currencies. So basically anything. So that's how it works. And uh, you can see here that the US dollar, uh, but snap swap, they are issuing US dollar. The great thing about that is that you can, that they are, that there's a history, so the issuing party can't delete that, so you will always have a record, because usually if you have a system, a centralized system, uh, the issuing party could also freeze your assets and all of that, and could never, uh, could also erase all the logs or whatever. But it's basically a, a transparent issued on the Expo Ledger, so they can can't delete the history, so they can deny you giving you the so making good on the promise and the IOU, but they can't uh, delete all the records of that. So it means you will, would be still probably be a, so they, the only thing they could do is like get away, run away, you know, get, lay low forever. But it's rather unlikely. So this way, it's basically the same trust you have in an exchange. Because when you have money, so when you buy cryptocurrency in an exchange, you you don't own the cryptocurrency. You just own an IOU saying you own that much of the currency, to, to, of the cryptocurrency. So when you have, for example, uh, what let's say Algorand on Coinbase. Uh, and you don't ha have not sent them to an o to your own wallet. Basically, Coinbase is just saying we owe you twenty algorands, but you're not actually in ho don't hold them because Coinbase could say whenever they want to, nope, we you won we won't allow you that, or we will freeze your account, we'll delete your account, whatever. So yes, but it's the same principle with issued currency. So you you will have to trust that the party issuing that makes good on the promise. 
Um, but yeah, it's the same trust principle here. But the, the, the advantages of that are uh, you're able to use the XRP Ledger infrastructure and send lots of transactions very fast and very cheap. So you will still have to pay the transaction fees in XRP, but they're very low. So you with one XRP, you can send about 87,000 uh, transactions. So one XRP is 1 million drops, as we know. And if you divide it by 12, you can see you've got 83,000. So with one XRP, you can make 83,000 transactions. All right, so that's basically it. So I hope this video was interesting to you and see you in the next video.